over the last few days, I have been working on a little system that I think you guys will really enjoy learning about. And that is my skill tree system that is heavily inspired by the one in Ant Empire. But before I get into today's video, if you guys do go on to enjoy or learn something from this video, please leave a like and subscribe. But let's get into the skill tree. So the first thing you will see is the skill tree area, which is made out of physical parts and there is nothing with UI in this system. So the first question you guys might have is why would I do that? Well, one reason it just looks better because having everything 2D might a little flat. For example, we have these glowing rings around the buttons and overall, I think using physical parts just makes it look a lot better and adds more. But this does come with a little cost and that is setting up everything so as you can see we have these four buttons here but also we have some invisible ones in their respected colors so we have all of these buttons and connector beams already in their folder but you can't see all of them and the reason why i did this is i wanted to keep things as simple and easy to configure as possible without making everything complicated and having to store a lot of information about positions and how to handle the buttons so that is why everything is already laid out here and just the buttons that you haven't unlocked it aren't visible and the information we do have though in these buttons is we have a connector attribute and the next node attribute so each node points has an attribute that points to the next node and also has a connector attribute that points to the connector that connects the next button if that makes any sense but if it is the last node in the tree of for the color then the connector and next node attributes are just empty so going back to that cost that comes with using physical parts a part of that is making custom systems like this custom camera drag module that controls the movement of the camera when we are in skill tree mode and so this is kind of lengthy 200 lines long roughly but it's for good reason because this module handles the camera movement on all devices so it's very basic, we have a start and stop function. And so when we start the camera drag, we are just checking if there is touch enabled, like if they are on mobile, then we just hide the touch GUI to make it easier for mobile players, set the camera type and C frame to set up the camera. And then I am not using <laughs> any connection managers. So I'm putting everything into a table and then disconnecting them later, I know. I'm going to get ridiculed in the comments for that. But anyways, when we scroll with our mouse, then it controls a zoom target variable, which we will handle later on in the script. I will show you guys that. And also mouse button one down. We are just detecting the drag. And while we are dragging, then it sets this pan target variable using this delta variable and new speed. And then coming down here, once again, we are detecting if the user is on mobile. So if user input service touch enabled, and if they are, then we're going to add two more connections, which is touch pan and touch pinch, which allows us to move the camera on mobile. And also if the mobile player wants to, then they can pinch their screen and they can zoom in and out just like you would on PC with your mouse wheel. And then coming down here is where basically all the magic happens. So in run service pre render, remember up here we were setting zoom target and pan target and the zoom target. Well, down here is where we actually make everything smooth and resolve everything. But before we actually get to that, which is down here, we first handle console movement. So as you can see here, if user input service gamepad enabled, then we will set up the gamepad functionality, which I will hop in and show you guys how that works as well. But down here is where all the magic happens. So we are basically just smoothly moving the current pan position toward the target position using lerp. So this allows us to smoothly move our camera around and also zoom current allows us to zoom in and out smoothly and then finally setting the camera C frame to all of these new values and also multiply it by the camera orientation to keep that same orientation. And then we have stop which just disconnects everything, cleans everything up and resets everything to old values. So there is our camera drag module. 
so i was going to show you guys what the controls looked like on xbox or a gamepad so here we are here you guys see a little preview of what everything looks like but basically we can use the d-pad to zoom in and out and then also we can move our camera with the left joystick and then if we wanted to actually select something then we'd use the virtual cursor and also the camera moves with that as well and then we would uh, hold down the right trigger to activate the buttons and buy new ones if we wanted to so now let's get into the actual buttons we have here so how are these being handled well for this system I use a custom click detector module instead of regular click detectors and why I do this is because this module has more events that the regular click detector does not for example mouse down and mouse up so if I were to hold down my mouse over the button then it works and if I release it then that works as well and it's very easy to use too so if I open up my skill tree client script and go down to here where we handle it we just loop through all the nodes and then find the base and then make a new detector and then just make it so when we have our mouse entering the base then it works mouse leave mouse down and then mouse up and then we tween the button and yes these buttons are models so how we are doing that i know there's modules for this but we're doing it the hard way we have this tween scale function where it takes in the model and the target scale and uses run service along with tween service to smoothly scale the button so there's that function here but while i was testing this on mobile it was kind of hard to actually click the buttons because a lot of times it wasn't registering so i didn't know if it was with the module or something like that so to fix that that is where this part of the code comes into play so basically what this get part from touch function is doing is given a screen position or touch position it tells us what 3d object the player is actually touching so touch position is 2d so we send it here into screen point to ray so we convert that screen point into a ray that shoots out of the camera so then we have this unit ray variable and then we use ray casting to actually get the part so here we shoot a ray from the unit rays origin and then send it in the direction and then we multiply it times a thousand so we actually hit it which a thousand's probably overkill but it works and then we send in our parameters which don't think i need respect can collide because i was just testing with that but basically here we have it set to raycast filter type include so it includes all of these nodes and so we get that raycast and return the result and then down here when there is movement or touch on the screen then we get the result from get part from touch and check if there actually is a result and there's an instance to it then we find that node and make sure the node exists and if it does then reset active node to or touch node to that node tween the node and then send a packet which i'll go over here in just a second and then touch ended just handles that with tween scale and then set active touch node back to nil so now let's follow this little pipeline we have here in both of these parts of the code we are sending the skill tree info packet to the server and we are sending the node name so on the server we pick that up and here's the skill name so we are just checking if the player already owns that skill then we just warn already owned and return and if they don't already have it owned then we check if they have the prerequisites and so that means it checks to see if we have the other buttons before that unlocked and how we do that is we have a module called skill tree data and this is probably isn't set up in the best way but it gets the job done basically these are all of the buttons and they are titled with their names and they each have an id what branch they are part of which is the color and the prerequisites which is a table that points to the id of what you need to have already owned and then we have the cost so if i wanted to have defense or try and buy defense then i would have to have jump height and walk speed already unlocked so that's pretty self-explanatory so it just checks that and so if we don't have those already owned then once again we warn and return so everything down here doesn't run but then we check in the data manager 
which has more to do with data stores which i will also get into so sit tight for that so we're just checking if we have enough skill points for that for the cost and if we do then we manage the skills which is basically add or subtract or no sorry sorry that's this okay so manage skills we send in the player in the skill name so now we just make it so the player owns the skill and manage skill points is where we actually take away the cost or the number of skill points away from the player and then we fire another packet back to the client and so then what happens when we return back to the client is down here we get the actual node model using the skill name that we sent we get the base and then we set the color of the base we then get a little sparkle particle that plays for a nice little effect and then remember the next node attribute we get the next node attribute inside of the node and then find the next node physical model and we set that so that it's visible and we can see it now down here this is just another little effect to show that we own the button it's a little shine effect which i should probably put back up here with the sparkles but you know it's right there and then we set the surface gui and G G all right surface gui of that next node equal to true so we can also see that and then get the connector attribute get that actual connector and set the beams enabled property of that connector equal to true and so if you guys want a little bit more information on the connector parts well here we have connector one and two and basically it's just a part and these two attachments are in it is what basically controls the beam so the first one or well this should be number one but basically the one attachment is in the middle of the one point or one base and then the other attachment is in the center of the other one and here's our beam that just connects them so pretty simple so now let's get more into data saving and stuff like that so for this i am obviously obviously using profile store because it's just easy and literally has everything for you already built into it so let's take a look at stats here the stats are just setting up the skill points the skill tree folder in the player and then also a folder for each of the colors and then we are sending a packet which i will also explain but first we are waiting one second to make sure everything is loaded because if i didn't have this here it was breaking so the, the simple task way it worked and so after we send that packet we are looping through all of the owned skills in the player skill tree and making strings and setting the parent of that string to the color the correct color folder so going ahead and looking at the client looking at skill tree join packet this just makes it so everything is set up when the player joins the game so we send all of the player's own skills back over here and then we convert this own skills table or list into a dictionary because later on we will loop through everything but checking a list is can be slow but it would be more slow if we had more skills so we're just setting up everything into a dictionary so everything is faster and if you've watched my other videos you know that direct lookup is a big o of one and so then down here it's basically doing exactly what i explained before where we find the node find the base and the ring set the base color and the transparency add the shine particle and make it so we can see the surface gui and then when we come down here this is where we enable connections and reveal the next skill so we loop again i know loop i know i'm contradicting myself but just give me a minute all right so we're looping through all of the skills in the owned lookup and so here we are getting the node and then the next node attribute and also the connector name attribute and then we come down here and get that next node and also get the connector and set that equal to true and then finally we come down here and look up the next node and get that next node base and a ring set the transparency so we can see it and also set the surface gui so why are we doing this well if we just spawned or made everything visible that we owned then how are we supposed to keep expanding the skill tree if we don't have everything so that's why down here we get the next node and the connector so then we can see that 
and be able to keep growing the skill tree if we don't have it fully unlocked. And so that is also why we aren't setting the color of the base because we don't own it. So, you know, there we go. So yeah, guys, that is pretty much my little skill tree project here. I'm now gonna go in and basically just play around with it more so you guys can see it. So again, there's the camera drag with the smooth movement and scrolling. And as you can see, the shine particle works just fine and is very cool. And then as you can see, like I just explained, it shows the connector and the next node so then we can keep growing the skill tree and I believe I have enough points so I can just check that again all right I have 19 so if I wanted to buy a new node and there we go and if I come over here and I can buy the rest of the nodes just like that there we go and I'm a little unsure on why these aren't working with the particles. But you know, this system isn't completely done because these buttons don't actually do anything when you buy them. Because this isn't an actual game. This was just for a little practice and fun. So these don't actually give you anything. But if it were an actual game, it wouldn't be hard to do that. But there we go. This is the full skill tree done. Okay guys, so I just took a little break to take a look at my code again and I think I figured out why the shine wasn't working and it's because it was only not working on the last button of the branch. So if I were to buy the green one down here, that would start working. But if I were to buy this, then that wouldn't work and that's because I would clone the shine after I would check for next node. And so since <laughs> the last button in the tree doesn't have a next node or doesn't point to a next node, then it won't run. So all that I would have to do is copy this and put it before that. So let's go ahead and try that again. If I were to buy that, that would work. That would work. And that would work. There we go. Just like that. So let me go ahead and fill out the entire thing now. There is the entire skill tree once again. And so yeah guys, this was today's video. If you guys did learn something from this video or you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe button. I will see you guys in the next video and peace.